On June 30th, President Biden issued an order relating to the release of JFK files that remain in the government's possession that continue to have redactions in them. And there are some 4,600 documents in the JFK assassination records collection at the National Archives that still contain redactions. And Biden's order enables primarily the CIA, but other government agencies to keep those documents secret indefinitely. At the same time, uh, new material was released. A lot of uh, several thousand documents were released over the last six months, not in their entirety in every case, but more uh, declassified versions than we have obtained before. And in those documents uh, was one very important document, in my view, which was uh, a document from 1962. So a 61-year-old document revealed the name of the CIA official who was reading Lee Harvey Oswald's mail before the Kennedy assassination, a detail that the CIA had hung on to for close to six decades. And the story of how the CIA monitored and surveilled the alleged assassin before Kennedy was killed is a key part of the JFK story that is still unfolding. His name, Ruben Efron, what did we, what dots can we connect from learning his name, from learning that backstory? What Ruben, what the, what Ruben Efron's name tells us is that the CIA was paying close attention to the man who is sometimes described as a lone gunman, and that he did so at the behest of se more senior officials within the CIA. So what, he, what his story points out is how the CIA watched the man who allegedly killed the president for four years before the assassination happened. And what this what this suggests is, is that the CIA was either incompetent in watching Oswald very closely and failing to stop him from protecting the president, or that the CIA was somehow manipulating Oswald into being what he said he was, which was a patsy for other people who actually committed the crime. And what we see is that we really can't answer that question yet thanks to the continuing secrecy of the CIA. Do you lean one way or the other when it comes to your personal thoughts and after all these years of research on the topic? You know, after all these years of research on the topic, I've come around to the view of President Truman, President Johnson, President Nixon, all of whom privately believed that Kennedy was killed by enemies who had the ability to make the crime look like something else and that those people might well have come from the CIA. Three presidents believed that. Um, Jackie Kennedy and Robert Kennedy believed that. Um, and so I think that's the most plausible explanation we have. But who specifically was behind the crime? That's what's still shrouded in official secrecy. Mr. Morley, how many documents are still redacted? Uh, what do we think is in there? Uh, what don't we know okay. about what's in there? So the JFK records collection, as it has been collected by the National Archives since the 1990s, consists of about 320,000 documents from a range of government agencies. Um, most of those, probably a majority of those are from the CIA, but the FBI and other agencies comprise a lot. Of the documents that still remain secret, there's 4,600 that contain redactions. And these redactions might range from a single word or a name, or a sentence, sometimes a paragraph or a whole page. Um, so those documents, the 4,600 documents are primarily from the CIA. There's a bunch that are from the IRS, which are exempt from disclosure. That's written into the law. Um, there are conversations between Jackie Kennedy and William Manchester, uh, the author that will not be released, but which are related to the assassination. You know, what's in these records are um, uh, what the CIA doesn't want to share about the assassination. Um, some of this is legitimate national security information, but I think that's a very, very small percentage of what we see in the redacted documents. When redactions have come off in the past, for example, in the last six months, oftentimes the, the information that's revealed is completely trivial. Um, and it's hard to believe that it was it was withheld. One document that came out earlier this year revealed that the United States had a uh, a listening post in Australia 
um, which is known as Pine Gap. Uh, at the time that the CIA was keeping this secret, Netflix had a series called Pine Gap about the U.S. listening post in Australia, and the CIA was still trying to keep that secret. That's the kind of excessive um, uh, secrecy that really, you know, makes people question whether the, the CIA is, is undertaking this law in good faith. Um, so a lot of the redactions are not important at all. And others, like the name of Reuben Efron, conceal information that is quite relevant to the assassination story that the CIA would prefer not to share because it's embarrassing. You know, the CIA doesn't want to explain to the American people, oh, we were reading the mail of the man who killed the president. They really don't want to talk about that for understandable reasons, not because there's some national security secret, but because it's highly embarrassing. And people say, well, how did that happen? Did anybody at the CIA lose their job because they were reading the mail of the man who killed Kennedy? No, nobody at the CIA so much has lost their job. So, you know, people don't trust the CIA on this issue, and nor should they, because the CIA has an atrocious record of lying about matters related to the assassination. And that's why we want to see all the records, because the CIA can't be trusted. We still don't have all the records. Um, the government has been very slow. You know, all, by law, all of these records were supposed to be released by October 2017. And first President Trump and then President Biden both acceded to CIA demands for continuing secrecy. So, you know, people are frustrated and they wonder, you know, why would the government do this? Why would you keep withholding information that's 60 years old? And, you know, when people act like they have something to hide, it, you know, it's reasonable to conclude that they have something to hide. And that's how the government and the CIA are behaving right now. Three days after the assassination, President Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover spoke, and they both said uh, and told aides explicitly that what they wanted was an investigation that found that Oswald had done this alone and had no collaborators. So the president had not even been buried. Oswald had not been, Oswald was dead and had not been buried. And the investigation had barely begun. And the president and J. Edgar Hoover wanted the lone gunman solution, and they got it. At nine months later, the Warren Commission said Lee Harvey Oswald killed the president for no reason, and then another guy came along and killed him because he felt like it. It's not a terribly credible story. It strained credulity at the time. And also, as Ron pointed out, writers immediately began to point out the story didn't make sense based on the evidence of the Warren Commission itself. And he mentioned Sylvia Marr. She wrote one of the books that was most influential on on me um, called Accessories After the Fact, um, which was a very careful book, not a conspiracy theory. And it just showed that the Warren Commission story couldn't possibly be true. So those doubts have been there strong, well founded right from the start. And the government's continuing obfuscation through multiple investigations, through a, a law that's supposed to give us full disclosure, you know, People can see the government really doesn't want to talk about this. And it's embarrassing. And it's it's a difficult, hard subject for the government to come to terms with. But 60 years later, it's an issue in the presidential election. You know, people still care about it. So if we have a government that responds to the will of the people, we are going to get all of these JFK records. But that's an open question. A question from uh, MLB on Twitter uh, sort of a big picture question to this segment. Why do you think finding out the truth about an assassination that took place in 1963 is still important today? That's a very good question. And that's it's it's a really important question. I think that, that a couple of things. One, this is a matter that people still care about. Right. When you when you look at a, a presidential candidate like Robert Kennedy talking about it, you look at the news coverage, President, former President Trump talking about it. It's an issue people still care about. Why? Because people feel that there was some possibility that was lost with, with the loss of Kennedy. And if the president was killed by enemies within his own government who got away with it, then we live in a different country than if that's not true. You know, and what happened after JFK's assassination when we had no real accountability? I mean, think about it. The president of the United States is shot dead in broad daylight, and no one is ever brought to justice for the crime. As a previous caller said, Lee Harvey Oswald was charged. He was never convicted. So his, uh, his innocence has to be presumed. 
Um, and that's the, you know, that's the conundrum where people pause. And without accountability, you know, this country went on a more militaristic course, I would say, after 1963, because the intelligence community was not held accountable the way it should have been, the way Harry Truman thought it should have been. You know, Harry Truman's response to the assassination was, we need to abolish the CIA. Truman clearly suspected that the assassination might have emanated from the clandestine service. It wasn't a conspiracy theory. That's what the former president of the United States, the man who signed the CIA into existence, that's what he believed. So after 1963, we lost this accountability and the CIA obtained a kind of impunity in the American power system that has been checked to some degree, but is still largely there. And so I think when people talk about the JFK story, they're interested in what happened historically, but they also care about something today, which is establishing credibility, accountability over these secret intelligence agencies that we seem to have lost. What is another big revelation from the these recent releases of the JFK documents? Yeah. Um, one of the most important, which I which I first reported on on JFK facts um, is a memo written by a man named Donald Heath and the Heath memo. Donald Heath was a undercover officer in the Miami station in 1963. And in 1977, when Congress reopened the congressional investigation, Heath wrote a memo to the House Select Committee on Assassinations. And he said, you should know that we conducted an investigation of the assassination in the Miami station. And in this memo, Heath laid out what the CIA had done in the immediate aftermath of the assassination, which was launch their own investigation of who killed Kennedy. Now, at the time that they launched this investigation, the president, Johnson, FBI director J. Edgar Hoover had agreed that they wanted to find that one man alone did this and had no co-conspirators. OK, they were echoed with that in that view by the Dallas Police Department and all of the national press corps. There were no JFK conspiracy theorists. But in South Florida, the, at, at, the, at the CIA station in Miami, they had a very different impression. They did not believe that Oswald alone had killed the president. They believed that he was what he said he was, a fall guy. And they set out to investigate anti-Castro Cubans known to the CIA in South Florida, who they thought might be behind killing Kennedy as a way of triggering a U.S. invasion of Cuba. That was the leading possibility in the eyes of the CIA in the immediate aftermath of the assassination. We didn't find out about this investigation until Heath's name was declassified last December. The results of that CIA investigation of Kennedy's murder have never been released. They were never shared with the Warren Commission or with any other investigation. And we don't know what they found. Did they find that anti-Castro exiles were involved in Kennedy's assassination? Did they absolve Cuban exiles from any role in the assassination? We don't know. But that document just came out. That's another example of something that took a long time for us to find out, is obviously relevant to understanding the assassination story, what did the CIA think of Kennedy's assassination? So, and we just found out about it now. So there are new things to be learned from these records. Um, and that, those, that's just one of the ones uh, that happened in the last six months. 